five minutes. Your awareness may be powerful enough to control your instincts. Your instinct will be to remove your hand from the box. It's your girl Mish, and welcome to another episode of the Love Mish Podcast. episode of love me podcast today's episode we are going to be talking about one of my favorite books look i have so many favorite books movies songs tv shows whatever this the name of this book is called managing depression with mindfulness for dummies oh so i'm just fell all right spirit this gonna be a good one i don't know what this one all right, Spirit, you are welcome to speak. Whatever messages you have. That was so random. Um, Managing Depression with Mindfulness for Dummies by Wiley Brand. Um, before I get into the book review, y'all know I'm a nerd. I love reading my books. I'm going to give y'all some cliff notes. Um, I wanted to go over my recos. You know, we got to do our recos. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before the recos. I'm so excited. It's a motherfucking three-day weekend. Hello. Um, the sun has been shining. Next week is supposed to warm up. I need to make my way to the beach, put my toes in the sand, hear the waves, hear the birds, soak up some good sunshine. Um, I'm excited for that. My dad's birthday is coming up. I'm excited for that. Um, it's going to be 50 fucking five, you know? 55 so many people are losing loved ones left and right i'm just so thankful to still have mine i'm so very blessed i can pick up the phone and call i can hug i can talk i can visit them because i know one day that won't be the case so i really really love to celebrate birthdays and go all out even if it's my last dime if i can if you know me, you know I will. Because one day I'm going to be sitting in front of your casket and I may want to say some things. You're not there. Hug you. You're not there. I want to talk to you. Call you. You're not. Whatever I do, it's not going to be reciprocated because you won't be there. And I just, I've always noticed how people go all out for funerals. Like that person is not fucking there. They don't see the flowers. They don't see, like, none of it. Maybe they do, but the point is, I would like to put all of that money and energy into them when they're alive, you know? I don't know. That's just kind of how I think of it. So, yeah, I'm excited about Papa Bear's birthday. Um, What else is going on? Yeah. I think that's about it for now okay so let's get into the recos let's see i done added a new category look as i grow this podcast gonna grow so for the business reco i wanted to recommend planet fitness um they used to have zero down but i think now they just collect the money but it's reasonable hear me out hear me out i have the link in the description it's $10 a month for the classic card. That means you only can go to the one location that you sign up with. And you don't get access to the massage chairs, the tanning bed, or something else. And then you have the $22.99 black card where you can go to any location. You can do the massage chair, the tanning bed. And it's one more little machine they have. Now, with both of them, you do have to pay a $39 annual fee. But one thing I love about Planet Fitness, baby, all around there, it has a judgment zone, judgment-free zone, okay? Because 
I was a cheerleader, okay? We was doing stretches and herkies and toe touches and we may have ran a lap. Like, I've never been, like, so athletic, okay? So, I like yoga. I like stretching. I like the dancing games and stuff because I'm just not an athletic person. But I do know you, you need to keep your blood flowing. You need to stretch, you know, yada, yada, yada. I was... I did have a membership with Planet Fitness, and I was going with my cousin. So shout out to my cousin. We would wake up early in the morning and go, and she was right there by my side. And I noticed right before all hell broke loose, which is a good thing, you know, uh, life has ups and downs, and they both do what they're supposed to do. So not saying it negatively, but it it definitely was when all shit hit the fan. Um, I just didn't go anymore. And. As much as I don't think I realized how helpful going to the gym was, walking on a treadmill, lifting weights, exercising, strengthening my core. Because I, I was I was already kind of going through the motions, but gym was kind of helping. And I noticed when I stopped, I kind of lost a little of that support. So no matter what you're going through, you could go play tennis, you could go play flag football, football. In my neighborhood, there's a softball field, and there are grown-ass adults that still play kickball, that still play softball, that still play basketball. So if you want to join up for something like a athletic to just keep that blood flowing, that does help. So I think that was a good recommendation in lieu of today's topic. Um... A video reco I want to give is with Miss Marlene Francois Madden with Black Girls Depression and Therapy. I haven't been noticing something funny with my eyes. I mentioned it on my last podcast. I can see like, I don't know if these are little sparkles of light, little atoms. I really don't know what to call them because they don't stand still. They're always moving and it's light. There's light in there. But now, um, as I was listening to her podcast, I saw this very light green. And I don't think it was her aura because it wasn't around her. I don't know if it was like the phone or whatever. I think I'm picking up auras now. It was light green. And green to me is love. So I feel like she's very passionate about what she's talking about. And when it comes to aura, the colors aren't like the colors that you see with your eyes. They're almost like light fluorescent colors. So I'm going to pick up a aura, aura color guide and just go over my colors and go over their meanings because I feel like I'm picking up auras now. So as she was talking, I saw a fluorescent green and I actually have a clip of her. Um, I'm going to play her clip, but also I wanted to go over her details. Um, so come on. It says, Black Girls Depression and Therapy from a Therapist. Have you ever wondered what depression looked like in black girls? It's okay to seek help if you're experiencing any sign of depression. Black girls deserve to have a safe safe space to feel supported, seen, and heard. The Suicide Crisis Hotline is 1-800-873-TALK. And talk is, um, the numbers for talk are 8255. Mental health app for black teens, not okay. To order a copy of The State of the Black Girls, you could visit her website or go to Amazon. Where to find a therapist, therapyforblackgirls.com, psychologytoday.com, melaninandmentalhealth.com, therapyden.com. To learn more about my therapy practices, visit heartsempowerment.com. But she only intakes New Jersey residents. But you can still check out her site to see if she's changed in lieu of COVID. This part, this uh, YouTube video was done March 26, 21. So with this being a brand new year, I'm not sure if she's changed her method. So you can uh, check it out. And I also have a clip of her that I want to play. And then I'll be right back. So we really need to be intentional about how we're helping them. So um, some things I want to share that you guys can do to help young black girls that are dealing with depression, really support them, show up for them and let them know that you care. Let them know that you're going to give them the space to talk and make sure that it's in a non-judgmental setting because you have to create that safe space. You need to know from them what does a safe space look like for them so you can show that for them so they know that you care. You want to also link them up with resources. 
whether it's them being a part of organizations where they have a supportive community, having them um, do some hobbies that they forgot about that they enjoy. It could be simple things like coloring, learning how to swim, learning how to play double dutch like I did growing up, um, learning how to journal their thoughts. So simple things like that because they need to talk about their feelings and their emotions and what they're experiencing. Something else too is you want to identify your triggers. What are your triggers that's happening in a moment? What are the things that you're saying to yourself if you're engaging in negative self-talk? So negative self-talk, when you're saying negative things about yourself, how can you change that narrative to say more positive things? Using I am statement to tell yourself that I am powerful, I am great, I am good, you know? Um, not only that, and this part right here, I want to talk to my girls real quick. So a lot of times I find that with girls, they feel like, well, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to tell people what I'm going through. But I want you to know that you're not a burden. You can share what you're going through and let people know because there are people who care about you. So tell yourself, I am worthy of having people that can help me and care about me to journey through this. And know that you're not alone. Other people have experienced what you're experiencing too. And you can get the help that you need. So, you know, it's okay if you have to see a psychiatrist to be on medication for depression or perhaps anxiety. It's okay to see a therapist that you have someone to talk to and give you some strategies and tools to, to help you so you can decrease your symptoms of depression or you know decrease the thoughts that you have of wanting to harm yourself. Um, there are tons of apps out here like the Not Okay app that's really great. And I will also link some resources in the bottom like Suicide Hotline and things like that. But I want you guys to know that this is an issue that has been going on for a very long time and we really need to pay attention because right now it's the second leading cause of death for adolescents, suicide. And this is something that we don't talk about often and we need to talk about it. So that way we can help our kids to succeed more. Um, so I really wanna put a challenge out here for those that are listening to this video is to show up for the girls that are around you. I'm gonna keep saying that word, show up, because you have to show up for them. They need help, um, we all need help. And so if you're going through a difficult time, just know that there are people who care about you. Um, and there are, there are tons of resources that are available out here, but if you feel like you don't have a supportive place, someone to talk to, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. I can link you up to some resources that are near you that may be able to be beneficial for you. And if you are a parent watching this, I want you to know that you are not alone. Please do not have any fear. You know, just take a deep breath. Don't, don't feel like, okay, well, what am I going to do now? Um, just know that your daughter needs you and you can show up for them. You can link them up with some resources to help them out. Um, and just know that there are other adults and mental health professionals who care too. Um, so link them up with those support systems because that's what they need. They need a supportive system to grow um, during this time and that they're not isolating themselves and they're finding things that make them happy. So getting some sunlight, going outside, not putting too much pressure on yourself to feel like you gotta constantly do because you wanna be in a place where you can just be and exist and be present in the moment, practice some deep breathing, taking your super warming cape off and feeling like, okay, I can, I can do this, I can do this, I can get through this. Um, so just know that this is, um, I'm gonna keep saying this, it's a public health crisis, it's a national crisis that needs to be addressed. And I'm glad there are some organizations out here that are addressing this. I'm glad that there are some policies that are underway that's trying to address this too. So I'm hoping we can get more people to help our girls so if you need a therapist, please go to therapyforblackgirls.com. You can search your directory and look in your state. You can also put your insurance and you'll find tons of therapists on that platform that you can reach out to. And that way you can get started with therapy if you're looking to see a therapist. And if you feel like you're in danger at this moment, don't, he don't hesitate to call 911 to speak to a local screening or mobile crisis center or crisis hotline at your local hospital where you can be assessed and seen by someone to make sure that you're safe because at the end of the day all right and then i also wanted to recommend my youtube playlist um i titled it therapy depression anxiety emotions healing is just a click away i look at so many youtube videos i just started putting them in categories and i have several different categories you could go to my link tree and look at my different pages but since I was looking at depression and stuff, you can just scroll down until you see the de depression ones. Um, as far as the podcast, my podcast reco would be Plants of the Gods, Hallucinogenics, Healing, Culture, and Conversations, Episode 1, Ayahuasca. Now, I've never heard anybody call them the Plants of the Gods. But when I started my vegan journey, my ears are ringing. 
Hey, spirit. When I started my vegan journey, I learned that there were different categories of people that eat different things. It's not just meat eaters. You have pescatarians that do fish. Um, you have herbivores that do fruit. Um, you have vegans that do do dairy. You have vegans that don't do dairy. You have breatharians that only drink water, coconut milk, and breathe in great prana. Um, the, clo the further away you get from meat, the closer you get to just water and air, the more in touch with your spirit that you are. I feel like that's the difference between humans who eat meat and you know we're not the ones living up in the mountains, right? Versus the monks and stuff who live up high in the mountains, away from electricity and society, high up in the clouds, close to God, right? So I've never heard anyone say that, you know, hallucinogenics were plants of the God. Because when I've smoked weed, you know, I felt like I were in a different plane, um, when I took mushrooms, I felt like I was in a different world. I can't imagine what ayahuasca is going to do. There's people that do LSD, all these psychedelics. Listen, <laughs> my journey is about to begin, okay? Um, I feel like more back in the day, back, back, back before, you know, society became what it is now, hallucinogenics, psychedelics, I think they were more of a norm, than what we have become now and i think we need to get back to that like plants in general they're either healing us or curing us or taking us to other worlds it's like plant life so the more i think about how plastic is ruining the oceans and they're putting chemtrails in the sky that are falling down on the plants they're using gmos in the food it's like they're destroying the very thing that was put here to help us grow and develop and to better beings, the food. Because as humans, you're going to eat. So if that food is healing you, nourishing you, helping you grow spiritually, you're going to end up being a great human being. But if they're contaminating the very source that you need to grow, you start to see the products of that contaminated food and the most important life force food is vegetation. Yeah, people eat meat, but guess what? That animal was eating plants. So all the, the nutritions that you were getting from that meat, it's less than what you would have gotten from eating the fruit or vegetables straight up. It's like secondhand nutrition. Why not just go ahead to the source? And when you cook it, you get less. You eat it raw. You get more if it's right off, right off the tree, right off the bush, right off the branch. It's even better. So that's where I'm trying to go. I, I would love to find a farm here. I would love to go actually pick some fruit. Um, and then when I have my home, I'll be so happy when I put some chickens in there. Give me them two little pigs. Y'all going to see. Just, just keep following me on the journey. So I have a clip um, from Plants of the Gods. Check him out. Um, I always like to recommend a podcast because I am. A part of the podcast world and you know me Sharon is Karen so I'll be right back after this snippet now when I first got to the Yanomami in the mid 80s and I saw them taking the snuff they would take these very long tubes which they call mokohiros and stick the tubes in their nostrils and then the shaman would blow in a huge amount of snuff and the recipient of the snuff would immediately cradle his skull and rock back and forth, rock back and forth, obviously, in great pain. And when I turned to my Yanomamo guide and said, well, that, that, looks, that looks awful, he said, well, if you take the snuff, and I recommend that you do, he says, you will feel terrible, and then you will feel wonderful. Now, in the white man's world, you drink aguardiente, and you feel wonderful, and then you feel terrible. So, who's smarter? All right, and then our Reiki healing or prayer recommendation, Reiko, would be to those given the test of sickness of mind, body, or soul, you are a conqueror. So, give birth to the healer that you were born to be. 
I said in my last podcast that I don't think anything ever is supposed to kill or destroy you. But it's like a pop quiz or a test in this realm called life to see if you can use everything that was given to you, everything that you've learned, everything that you've observed, everything that you can pull from deep within and overcome. And I feel like those that do are the, are the ones that are like those overnight success. Like you hear Tyler Perry was homeless and now he's this multi-billionaire. But what would have happened if he would have sub- succumbed to being homeless? Woe is me mentality. So the same energy, the same force, the same strength that he used to overcome, it's seen in the success, wealth, and revenue that he's earned. Um, so yeah, sometimes people, I used to say, you know, oh, this person, all this money, but you just never know what a person went through or what happened to them to get to to point B, you know, you didn't see point A, you only saw point B. So take whatever it is that life is trying to teach you, overcome, okay, help the next person, each one teach one and keep it moving. You got it. You've got what it takes. All right. And so my music record would be Speaking It Into Existence by Chris and Teep. And I have a little mini clip of that that I want to share with you. And as a matter of fact, this is going to be my morning ringtone, okay? Because some mornings, I'd be like, mm, not today. But I'm going to change this to my morning alarm. It's just so cool that I'm like, like, when you change, everything around you changes. Like, when I was vegan, I was finding out about vegan restaurants I never heard about. Slutty vegan. You know? Um, Toss Green. Like, all these places I had not freaking heard of. I was just hearing about all the vegan shit. Um, When I started meditating, all this meditation stuff come up. When I started growing in spirituality and learning all these different people, I'm I'm starting to meet more people. Different people are coming up on my YouTube and social media and different emails. It's like, wow. Everything around you changes to match the fucking frequency that you're on that was a whole message i just light bulb thing i just got that so sometimes you can't get to the level that you want to be at because you're not on that fucking frequency wow so being wealthy is a frequency being married is a frequency being a mom is a frequency dang i'm about to look up frequencies y'all okay So I'm going to come right back after we listen to the clip of um, Speak It Into Existence by Chris and Teeb, and we're going to keep going. And last but not least, I'm going to add a whole new thing, (laughs) y'all. So this section is called Spiritual Teacher Mentor Guide Reco. Um, I have bumped into so many, I don't even know if I've, I've been watching people and listening to people, but for for whatever reason now, I'm like adding their names to, I don't made a whole Outlook folder that's called Spiritual Teachers, Mentors, and Guides. And when I tell you it's so many names in there, I'm putting down people's names, links to their websites so I can start to donate and like, you know, really spiritually pour into them with you know the frequency of money and it's so crazy because the last one i just found was melanindvds.com and the man is selling dvds but i was like it's 2022 um do you have links to these videos he was like no and he emailed back instantly he or she like no but we about to start a patreon um and it's dvds for now which is fine i still have a mac that has a dvd um, I'm about to get, because I gave my nieces and nephews my old Xbox. I'm going to get another one because my favorite game is the dancing game. But I don't know. I might want to get a, a Twitch, whatever you call them thing. Because my little cousins was playing games and I'm used to playing, like, you know, the little racing games. I'm trying to think of one of the names. I grew up playing Aladdin. Um, I grew up playing... Um, 
Power Rangers, Bugs Life. It just was like, I guess, kitty games. And I remember games were kid games. You see how games have moved into the adult world? I'm just saying. But um, when I clicked on Melon DVDs, it's all of these mentors, all of these names. And I'm like, dang, guy. <laughs> I had a couple of them, but if I add all their names, good grief. So I just made one folder for Melanie DVDs because when you click on there, it's so many. Doctor this, doctor that, doctor this, doctor that. I'm like, yes. So I guess one of my callings in this in this realm of existing is learning. My spiritual advisor called me a librarian. I feel like maybe in the higher realms, I probably work in the Akasha Records field because I just cannot get away from information. Like, I share all the time, but the more I learn about myself, I am a guy. So everything that I've ever looked at, it always said that I was a leader. Leader, 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 teacher. Um, and I was like, there's no way I can work in this teaching field. I don't give two shits about any of the stuff that they're talking about, but this is the field that I was meant to be in. But I don't consider myself a teacher because there's just so much to learn. I'll forever be a student. But with me going to college and you know just loving to go to school i always have to take notes always have to read books always have cliff notes so that's just kind of where i feel comfortable so it's like a guy can guide you to a book could guide you to another mentor can guide so that's where i feel comfortable like i always say sharing is caring so it's just interesting learning more about myself and why i do the things i do you you do the things that you already supposed to do. You just don't really know why you're doing it. It's just so crazy. So the first spiritual teacher mentor guy that I will, I always tell y'all Sharita. So of course she was number one. Um, I already told you about my sister. I already told you about my soul sister, Aku Ivy, my sister, these pieces of love, Sharita. So y'all always hear him. Now I'm going to start to recommend other people that I follow as well because hey i'm a guide so maybe i can guide you to their youtube or whatever to what wherever they are in the internet of things so her name is pageant queen pixie she definitely just gave me a word today um my, my sister always talks to me about boundaries and i don't think i've ever had a fucking boundary in my life um i've always been like a yes person a people pleaser just you know here to make I'm such a giver. I'm always going to give the person what they need. What I didn't realize that I was neglecting myself for so long. I think I just finally had a mental breakdown. And I wanted to just do every single thing about me. Fuck what anybody else wanted to do or say. Just me, me, me. And it seems selfish and good. It needs to be selfish because I haven't been selfish ever. And she mentioned boundaries. And she was kind of like, you know, kind of how you aren't really hanging with your friends anymore. And that like hit my soul. I was like... I'm really not hanging with my friends. I don't even know what to call it. I was just like, God, you know where I'm at. I can't even call it. And I just started feeling bad because I, I know I'm here, but I didn't know what to call it. I don't even know how to explain it. And she just read me from A to B with this. With, this is how spirit be talking to me. I literally was saying like, God, you know my heart. If somebody called me today and they need me, I'm there. I am. That's just how I am. But I'm in a space of me right now because this is where I need to be. So when she read that podcast, when she, to my podcast, all right, Pixie Girl, you got a podcast calling you. When she did her YouTube, it explained everything that I've been going through, everything that I've been feeling. And I just like took a sigh of relief. Like, ah. So one thing about me, I, I have feels. I can give you all the feels. I can look at someone else i'm i'm still learning me that's my problem i can look at someone else and without them saying anything i can tell you how they feel i do this with tv i do this with shows ask anybody they always be like hush we're trying to watch a movie trying to watch a show it's just because i feel like i, I can explain it i know what's going to happen before it happens externally what i'm trying to <laughs> understand more is internal so i couldn't even explain like what it is but she explained it beautifully and so I've also started to journal. And when I journal, I see like so much stuff comes out. So maybe it just takes me a little while to kind of like reflect or as I continue to journal, maybe I'll build up that muscle. But yeah, communication is just really, really bad for me. I, I'm going to get better at it, but I'm a feels. I may can put on a song that could tell you how I feel <laughs> better than I can explain it. But hey, this is life and we're all growing. So I'm going to let you listen to a little clip from Miss Pageant Queen Pixie. 
I just added her to my little list, added her page, added her store so I can order some things and just show your girl some love. Um, Sharon is caring and we are all fractal pic pic fractal pictures of creator living different types of existences, whether it be a germ, a plant, an animal, a human, an alien, an extraterrestrial, a whole planet. We are all gathering information and learning, and we're all going to go back to source one day. So that, you know, that's basically what all of this is about. So she's basically a reflection of me and you, a reflection of creator, and hopefully she has a message for you. So I will be right back after this clip. Very strange when they're just used to knowing a different version of you. And a lot of times we are so, so set in our ways. We are so, so stubborn. So when we emerge as this enlightened, brand new breath of fresh air, a lot of people can't even understand it or put two and two together. So we also have to give people around us, you know, time to align with the things that we want. But communication, communication, draw that line, set that boundary and stick with it. And if they play with it, then bye. And that way you're able to understand, okay, I gave this person a boundary. They chose to disrespect it anyway. What can you do about that? You know, all you can do in those situations is release and move forward. You did what you had to. They just, you know, didn't keep up the end of the bargain, but. The biggest part of this journey is serving you and understanding that in order to serve anyone in life, you have to first serve yourself. So in these relationships, it's important to understand as I am becoming a new person, this relationship needs to grow. This relationship needs to meet me where I am. You know, have conversations, you know, with your partner. Talk to the person that you are with. Talk to the person that you love. Talk to the person that you are married to and let them know that you are moving your life in a different direction and that you would love to have them with you. And this is how you get to fall into this space you know i want to do certain things i want to be in certain spaces i want to have different conversations there could be a lot of old you know stuff away in dresses and drawers that you got going on with people letting them know hey i want to release this i want to get all of this shit on the table i want to move forward i want to make this relationship one that serves us better it can even be as simple as that i want to make this relationship one that serves us better how can i be a better friend to you how can i be a better partner to you you know what do i need to do to see you shine what do i need to do to benefit your energy more you know in all spaces we just want our friends to serve us so very quickly we start to realize wow other than a good time i'm really not getting anything from these energies if anything it's weighing me down and stressing me out it's like okay expressing that and letting people know that because if they love you and they want to see you grow then they will be there for you but of course it's also a time for us to realize who is for us and it is not so it's such a balance you know everything really is equally as beautiful and as giving and as you know new and beautiful you know meeting all these new people learning all of these new things and tapping into all these new perspectives and we're purging all of the old stuff so there's a lot of things in our life that cannot align with the new life because you are a new person in, like in totality you're a completely new person you know a lot of times we eat differently we walk differently we talk differently about our passions we start different jobs and we might parent our children differently and try to instill different values in them you know we go through so many changes in who we are and how we want to live our life for the duration, you know, of our time here on earth. It's so imperative that we're able to, you know, be vocal about that and let everybody else know the space that we're in so they can meet us as well. Because a lot of times the people in your life are there to help you articulate the things that you're feeling and help you see eye to eye, especially if you know you have people who love you and who support you. But yeah, community is definitely important. It's definitely going to be a lot of change. But of course, if the people love you that are around you, then they will support you in that change. And if they don't, that is all good as well. So yes, guys. Now, wasn't that a word? I mean, it was a word for me. What I realized, though, is I connect more with people who started on the Christian journey and that can welcome in other types of spirituality as well because i feel like our roots started the same like she's one she's a pastor's kid for pete's sake up here talk about crystals you know smoking herbals and everything else like i just love tarot cards moon reading i just love it i just love it there um dr delbert blair was the same way a whole ordained pastor uh believing in extraterrestrials um, you know, talking about dials and EMF protection and what you could do to heal yourself and all the things. It's like, oh my God, that's a lot people. Like I will never, 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 never doubt Christianity. That's where my roots were grown. You know, that was that was the ground that I grew on. But it feels it feels like what I've learned with my mom's garden is she'll start out with a little tiny cup. 
She'll let them grow. She'll put lights on them. Like just giving them so much love, care, and attention. And then next thing you know, they're outside. Like she done moved them all outside. You know, so it's like, okay, you're bigger and strong enough to handle outside. And I kind of feel like th- that's what Christianity was in with my parents and how I was raised. It was like a protection for me to grow get some type of backbone and now I'm in the world and I'm learning other things so that's just kind of how I relate the two so yeah I know my intros be a little long (laughs) but now we're ready to get into managing depression and mindfulness but I just have to read this first part because I feel like these people be doing what they doing what they probably don't even feel like is of importance but they'd be really be out here saving lives real deal i feel like this man saved my life okay so if you're reading this book then it's very likely that either you or someone you know is affected by depression i know from personal experience having lived with the condition myself that it can be very tough and that often it's difficult to get out of bed i have called out so many times my manager probably gets yelled at by her manager but i'm like y'all either gonna let me take this time or i'm gonna get fmla out of ass which way um so let me continue to say nothing about reading a whole book in my own experience i have been where there was no hope no guiding light at the end of the tunnel with very dark thoughts with my future constantly on my mind barking like hungry dogs that haven't been fed for days you might or might not relate to this. I'm writing this book both as someone who has firsthand experience living with depression as well as someone who has counseled many people affected with this condition, both in private practice as well as within an inpatient psychiatric hospital setting. More importantly, I am writing this book as someone who recovered from the condition. That's my favorite part, like recover. So in other words, I've been where you were. I know how you feel. There's hope. I overcame and you can too. That's what I got out of that. I really, really love this book. I'm just going to go over different, like when I read a book, I have highlights everywhere. Not highlights, but I underline like every little thing. So I'm just going to go over some of the important things because I don't want this one to be a long podcast. So uh, let me start here. You are not alone. One in four have depression. I keep getting that one in four. I'm going to write those numbers down. One in four with depression. One in four with baby loss. All right. Y'all know I get things in three, so this is two. The truth is that many people who look happy are, in fact, also depressed and chronically unhappy. There are more of us than you think. And on the last podcast, I mentioned that there are people that can function high with depression and they're called high function high function depression i gotta plug the phone up like we going dead y'all high functioning depression now where is my block i gotta find my little one what do y'all call those things i gotta find my block i gotta find my block The truth is that many people who look happy are, in fact, also depressed and chronically unhappy. There are more of us than you think. The World Health Organization predicts that more people will be affected by by depression than any other health problem by 2030. Now, I have a book that talks about the World Health Organization, WHO, and the 2030 agenda. I wonder why y'all know that by 2030, people are going to have depression. So... I've been hearing in the conscious community, protect your mind, protect your mind, protect your mind, protect your mind. Yeah, they are really like 
probably causing a lot of this stuff to put people in depressed states because when you're depressed you you know you're very emotional you're sad that lowers your immune system that means you're more open to attacks like vi vibrating high is more than just being happy it affects everything mind body soul emotion so yeah the the fact that who is up here predicting so anything that you at this point when you predict something that means you you're basically causing it that's my thoughts and i'm sticking with it so practicing mindfulness regularly can not only prevent depression but it can also help treat it so this morning like i have two alarms set i have okay girl it's almost time to get up and then i write big like really get up <laughs> um and by the time that first one go off i'm like not even sleep no more i'm just kind of there so in that realm i get like a, a lot of thoughts because i'm not sleep anymore and it was like okay i already have my baby does fertility cards and it was like make affirmation cards make gratitude cards so I'm like, oh my God. I wrote them down and it's like, before I can finish one thing, another thing come, and another thing come, another thing can come. So I think universe guys, spiritual guys, creator, maybe people from the other side, they be wanting us to do things for them to help people here. And either you answer the call or they have to go to someone else. So make sure you're answering those calls, whatever it may be. It may be you write a children's book. You never know the purpose they're telling you to write that children's book. You could be saving someone's life. So just do it. So I'm going to do the cards and I'm excited because since I've started journaling, I'm going to shuffle them cards and that's what I'm going to write my gratitude about. I'm going to shuffle them cards and that's what I'm going to do my affirmations on. So I'm like, okay, spirit, you know, I'm just following the little whispers that I get. Okay, so research shows that people who ask for help recover much faster than, than those who don't. So, of course, if you ask for help, you can get all types of resources. If you don't, you know, all the resources were there. They just didn't really know you needed them. And it's like, ah. But I kind of feel torn with this. I don't think you should have to ask for help. Sometimes help just needs to automatically be there. Why aren't we being offered in grade school a, a period, a week, or maybe once a month where you go talk to your counselor? Mandatory. Not because you go in there and you're trying to get in college, but how are you doing are you stressed how are things at home with mom and dad because number one a lot of kids are being raped and molested and nobody seems to know about it so the government is failing um whatever that agency is child protective services like all of this stuff like i don't understand how these kids still keep slip, slipping through the cracks and i feel like by talking to that person and building up that relationship with that person as you go through middle school elementary that's five years middle school that's four years i mean three years high school that's four years like you're gonna build a bond with these counselors so i feel like if they make you go if it's not once a week every two weeks once a month however the fact is you're getting help that that your parents may not be able to give you that you may need, not know how to give yourself i don't know if if i were president that's definitely one thing i would implement in society so we'll see. We'll see if that will manifest into reality one day. So yeah, people who don't ask for help, you know, people who do ask for help recover faster than don't than those who don't. But my opinion is, I feel like help should just it should be like there more readily than it is. Okay. Um, according to UK Mental Health Foundation, about half of those people who experience depression will also experience anxiety. This means that to some extent, depression and anxiety go together. They're like two best friends, always on the bus. I love that. Um, the link between anxiety and depression is so strong that most antidepressants are used to treat both anxiety and depression at the same time. Uh, let's see. It's human nature to not notice positive changes. Rome wasn't built in a day. Learning mindfulness is a skill. And learning to manage your mood more effectively and feel better takes time as well. So that's what I'm learning, like emotional intelligence. How to manage, you know, my emotions, boundaries, triggers, you know, staying away from certain things that trigger certain things out of me setting boundaries so that I don't end up in certain places or around certain people or certain things can help avoid this these things from happening too. 
and I keep getting mindfulness. I keep getting meditate. Like I cannot get away from this. <laughs> At this moment, should I name my daughter meditation or mindfulness? Because it just keeps coming up. In other words, mindfulness is how you truly relate to your very own life and existence. And that's what I've been learning too. Like everything truly is a reflection of you. And it's easy to say, you know, all these external things cause these things to happen internally. But really, if you start internal, it solves the problem. For example, let me just vent for a moment. So this lady, she's upset. She, you know, I work, I work on a refund line. So she's like, where is my refund? Why is my refund delayed? I'm like, okay, well, ma'am, you received your third stimulus of $1,400. However, when you filed your new tax return, you stated that you were missing $1,400. This is called a math error. Now we have to recalculate your return. Send your letter, give you a chance to agree or disagree, and then send your refund within 46 weeks. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why is it taking 46 weeks just to send a letter just to get my money? You're right, ma'am. Why does it take that long to do that? I wish we would email these people stuff. I wish we would send them a text message. I wish there was an online portal. Like, you're right. There's a lot of changes that can take place. But let's pause for a moment and let's go back to the very beginning. <laughs> if you had not miscalculated your return, if you would have called in for help so that you wouldn't have made a mistake, we wouldn't be here today. So it's like, yeah, all those external factors can cause things, but let's just rewind and go back to the very beginning. What could you have done to prevent all of that from happening? And I was just like, when I hung up with her, I was like, okay, spirit, can you play so much? Because <laughs> it was like, ding, doesn't this sound familiar, Janisha? It was like, ding. That's how we get my little messages. Um, so yeah, external becomes internal. <laughs> internal becomes external is really an an internal everything is really internal put it that way so let's see um when you wake up in the morning and just know that it's not going to be good a good day right do you know that feeling i bet you do your mind is racing with fearful thoughts your body feels tight and sore with painful sensations and you feel anxious sad and somewhat irritable that has happened a lot um let's see return what one of one piece of advice they give is you can return your attention to your body so a lot of times we're in our head oh my gosh like for me i wanted to be married with kids by 25 okay girl we about to be 35 10 years has passed and this has not happened like all in the future like anxiety 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 yeah because I'm not what? Focus on the now. Okay, well, we're not there. We don't have those things. But what can we do in the space that we have now? So you have all these free times to cultivate all these ideas and learning and stuff that you want to do. Be thankful for that. So sometimes either past thinking or future thinking causes different emotions. Like thinking about the past is more depression. Thinking about the future is more anxiety just because you aren't now. Try to like bring it back in and focus on that. what can we do with the time that we have now, with the things that we have now, what are we thankful for? Just like bringing it into the now. Um, you know what that reminds me of? There was this movie where the guy had a remote and he could fast forward, rewind and stuff like that. And he just wanted to fast forward so much, I guess, to get to success or whatever. And he had missed all those beautiful memories. And he had regretted it like. They'll ask him, do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? And he didn't. You don't fast forward all the way. So sometimes being in your head, these days are going to start to flip by like a calendar. Like last year went by so fast. Were you really living in each moment of that day? Or did it just zoom by? Like I'm starting to look at my nieces and stuff like, oh my gosh, you're freaking 15. Like where did time go? Like you want to make sure that you're being present in most of your days to where you have i have 365 fucking memories you know what i mean like we have to be more in the day um let's see did that already did that already most of us in modern society are stuck or lost in our heads People with depression dwell more in the past instead of planning for their future. 
And I put down, like I always add little notes that I'm an air sign. So I'm already always in the clouds. You add depression on top of that. <laughs> I mean, the past and in the clouds, it's like a bad, it's like bad. Uh, let's see. They say, I believe the more informed we are about what is happening to us, the more empowered we can be to do something about it rather than suffer in isolation or silence. Sometimes you don't know what's going on. Like, what the... Like, I just woke up like, what the, f like, it, it's good when I started learning, like, okay, there's, there's depression, okay, there's anxiety, okay, and then you find these support groups, you find these books, you find these classes, you find these YouTube, you're like, okay, I'm not crazy, I'm not alone, okay, this might be a dark seat of the soul, this might be a spiritual awakening, it's like, okay, like, it helps you understand a bit more, like, you still might be grounding, but let me put this life vest on, and I'm, I can float to, like, get, <laughs> get to ground, you know what I mean, it just makes you gives you a little more comfort and security to get through it if you go to a medical doctor he or she might tell you that depression is a brain condition or an illness which happens because your brain is not making certain chemicals called neurotransmitters depression is connected to how you think and process and express your emotions so i don't think we realize even myself how many thoughts are running through your head in the course of a day and if they are not trained, your body is reacting from them. You're getting emotions from them. It can really affect you. Like, sometimes my job stresses me out so much. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, 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 my God. And I can just imagine the thoughts that are running through my head. So my body is like, I'm sick of this. My mind is like, I'm sick of this. My body is like, I'm sick of this. I might end up getting sick. You get what I'm saying? So you have to be, like, careful. So... As I mentioned before, I just start to say, like, you know, I'm, you know, thankful for this job. Some people don't have a job. You know, I'm about to pay off my car. You know, I use that extra money for other things. You know, I have extra money to help out people around me because that is a seed that was sown in me. So thank you. Shout out to your freedom, my spiritual advisor, to use our finances to help the spiritual community to sow back into those that have sown into us like money is a form of energy um you know it's it's a form of love too so i'm excited to just be able to plant so many spiritual seeds financially you know starting with my family and working this way out like a spiral so i'm excited to do that but just giving myself positive thoughts like you know yes another credit card pay yes another card no yes are you almost done girl you know to help me get through them calls because these people want their money and this shit is stressful as hell okay let's see mindfulness here we go again helps you to be more in tune with your life and focuses on helping you manage your thoughts emotions and behavior it deals more with the psychological and behavior aspects of depression, such as helping you to feel more grounded and reducing the excessive, unhelpful thinking that empowers you to make better choices. I love that. In other words, this book will help you to learn techniques that will help you reduce negative and take achievement steps towards managing and healing through your conditions more effectively. Um, mindfulness helps you to be aware of what other areas in your life may need to be examined, such as your environment, what you eat, your diet, the absence of good, supportive, nurturing human relationships. Did we not just talk about that? Okay, we're we'll be connecting them dots. Um, let's see. They give different frequencies of depression. So mild depression. In mild depression, you might be able to get on with your daily life. And most of the demands placed on it, but you are just not feeling right. And you're struggling. Your energy might be low, accompanied by anxiety. You might be feeling low in mood for no apparent reason. You're just not enjoying life as much as you would like. You are able to deal with this in some way using your own coping strategies. Moderate depression. If your depression is moderate, then you might be feeling like your ability to cope with daily tasks is strongly affected. Doing the most simple things, such as going to work, is very difficult. 
your sleep might be badly affected you might feel like your mind is just going in circles thinking negative thoughts which makes all things work moderate depression is similar to mild form but it is much worse severe and severe or clinical depression, also called major depression, you might feel like you just cannot cope at all and go on. You have no energy to eat or do the most basic things. Working might be impossible and you might even have persistent thoughts or impulses about ending your life. This form of depression might feel like total collapse of your mind and body and requires medical attention. Okay. Um. Let's see. They give different examples of depression. I wanted to go over those. Too much stress. Depression due to chronic stress. As humans, we can adapt and meet the challenges placed upon us. But there comes a point when we can no longer cope with excessive stress, causing a kind of collapse, which can lead to low mood and possible depression. I feel like I was coping for so long till I couldn't. So I, I relate with that one. Food for the brain, low mood due to nutritional deficiencies. So who knew eating unhealthy bad foods is a form of depression? Now, why we never hear that on the news? I always write notes. I put enough is enough um, for the chronic stress on the previous one. But for this one, I put your body's cry for help. Like your car running out of gas. You can turn it on, but it won't crank. So nutrition is important um the search for meaning existential distress some people who are deeply sensitive oh my god you see how these words stick out now deeply sensitive might feel that life is not making sense anymore when the more i started to learn about spirituality and a human traffic i just really felt like what the fuck is that? like i really like i hit that too some people who are deeply sensitive might feel like life is not making sense anymore. There, th This is where they question about reality of life. Meaning and purpose might become apparent. And there's a kind of spiritual quality to this experience. People who are experiencing this kind feel confused about their place in life. They feel unfulfilled in some way. This kind of spiritual distress can be often misinterpreted and misdiagnosed as a depression. My body hurts. Depression due to illness. Physical illness which seriously affects your ability to enjoy life and causes you physical pain, can cause you low mood and potential depression. Too much change, low mood due to extreme life-changing events. Situations such as loss of a job. Dad around here wanting people to get the shot. I refuse. Death of a loved one that was just happening way too much can potentially cause anxiety and depression. This form of low mood and distress is usually a healthy reaction to a difficult life situation. Now, why would they say that? A, a, a healthy reaction to a diff difficult situation. I guess. I guess the emotions got to come out somehow, huh? Grieving becomes stuck as people find it hard to go through the different stages of grieving. It is here that depression can set in. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So feel the feels and let it go. But if it becomes stuck, it's a problem. Give me some light. Seasonal affective disorder. We did a whole podcast on that, didn't we? This condition is caused by lack of sunlight and usually affects people who work night shifts and in countries that have low winters or where there's an absence of natural sunlight. One theory is that lack of sunlight makes the brain produce too less melatonin. Oh my God. Can we talk about it? A naturally occurring chemical in the brain that causes sleepiness and helps people fall asleep at night. Another theory is that lack of sunlight causes low production of serotonin, another chemical made by the brain that affects mood and level of well-being. Okay, serotonin for the win. Um, let's see. Before and, have, before and after having a baby, pre and postnatal depression. I want to say that there may be a non-natal depression, okay? <laughs> that somebody needs to... They need to do a whole study on that. So you got um finding out that you're pregnant, you go through this pre this whole prenatal depression. I have experienced that. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even have a crib. Like all these stuff start coming. And then postnatal after you have depression, I've seen so many women go through that. But okay, the absence of natal depression is a thing too. Let's just read about this. Most pregnancies go smoothly. There can be excitement as well as anxiety about giving birth. This is a normal response shown by most women. At times, however, some women experience severe anxiety and low mood either prior 
or after giving birth. The actual cause of this complex might have something to do with hormonal changes, previous depression, and contributed by potential problems within the family and perceived lack of support. Living with trauma, depression to abuse, childhood, mental, physical, and sexual abuse can create a lot of pain, not only for the child during the abuse, but also later in adult life when the incident becomes buried and in some way forgotten. Such an experience can cause feelings of shame, guilt, anger, rage, with, which often become suppressed, potentially leading to depression. Oh my God, I've experienced so many of these. It's in my genes genetic predisposition. In some rare cases, there may be a predisposition to depression, especially if it runs in a family. Now, why don't they call a spade a spade? I think every race in this entire world, except for one, let's just call it what it is, has experienced some type of genetic trauma, PTSD. For my culture, it's the natives. How somebody just gonna roll on your land and and give you smallpox and and come with this brand new steel gun and wipe y'all out and make y'all slaves? And then on my other heritage, how somebody just gonna put shackles on you and sell you all across the world? And then tell you the Bible said that you would be happy to be a slave and obey your master. Please, they can take that and shove that up the highest, up the highest. Okay. Um. So yeah, of course there's a fucking genetic uh, predisposition for every race except for one. If we all just <laughs> come to that conclusion and do something about it. Okay, severe mood swings, bipolar disorder. This is a more serious form of depression where people have days feeling extremely elated or happy, energetic, and other days feeling utterly hopeless and extremely low mood. Now, although they remember I did the podcast about spiritual awakening, I feel like sometimes with bipolar, people could be channeling. I also feel with bipolar is for people that aren't taking the time to meditate and align their chakras. Like living on this realm it you know we need to recharge and balance and you know as creator to recharge us because this this is a crazy existence for sure medication mood changes due to side effects of medications you might be experiencing changes in mood possible depression due to some medication now when i went when i got approved for fmla and i went to the doctor he said me and the nurse we're both taking it i'm like the hell that's why y'all so damn happy it's not even a real happy the drugs are producing those chemical reactions for you that's just like me eating gmos it's not natural you know and then some of those medications they were like suicidal i'm like oh heck no i already don't want to be here i don't need to be taking nothing that's gonna make me want to be out here even more the next one, I just cannot go on, major or clinical depression. This is very severe type of depression, which at times can come without any known reason. Um, the cause is very, depression can turn into a form of severe mental illness. In order for you to be diagnosed with clinical depression, you must be experiencing certain debilitating system, symptoms which are present for at least two weeks. So they do a body mind and action and social checklist so i wanted to go open them i thought this was pretty cool your body physical symptoms would be moving or speaking more slowly than usual changes in appetite constipation unexplained aches or pains lack of energy lack of interest in sex thanks a million for listening there's a million podcasts in the world you clicked on this one little this one to hear what i have to say i hope universe has a special message for you you can reach me on linktree at forward slash love dot i hope you have a better than a great day love you talk to you later bye you all come to us young people for hope how dare you you have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words and yet one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is
is money, fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you 